Doctors of Reddit, what is the most obvious lie a patient has ever told about their health history? Patient brought to the air, was allegedly naked in his bedroom making a salad, when he accidentally sat on an upright cucumber. We got a lot of mandible fractures in the ore and it was always the same basic story of what happened. I was minding my own business and some guy sucker punched me at the bar. I fell off my bed and hit my nightstand. You could tell these people very clearly were in a brawl of some sort. I have a very hard time believing all of them were walking their grandmother to church and a random person punched them. I once gave myself a bruised orbital bone trying to pull my blankets up, so I'll believe a lot. Last week in an endocrine clinic, discussing an obese diabetic patient's weight gain and diet, I went through each of her meals asking when and what she eats. Essentially, she told me that she drinks a glass of water around noon each day and that's it. Still gaining weight. My attending, I'm a resident, told me I should have recommended that she drink half a glass of water instead. In all seriousness though, some people can't even be honest with themselves, so it's not worth getting upset if they are dishonest with you. Just keep encouraging them in the right direction. My ex-husband, who got booted from the navy for being chronically fat, used to claim to have eaten nothing all day long. Go out to the van for something and there was the empty liter of Mountain Dew and full size can of Pringles. I did the math on that once and it's something like 1300 calories of nothing. I used to work an x-ray. Sometimes people don't know they're lying. Have you had any metal wear replacement? No they just fix the bone. Do the x-ray and it's a massive rod in there. And the patient literally had no idea that was there. Or the sadder cases of elderly people who just don't know. You tell them they've had a hip replacement, and they just don't believe you. I work at an orthopedic office near two senior communities and the amount of times they have no idea they had rods put in after breaking their arm is insane. I worked in a hospital for quite a while though not as doctor. Normally it isn't lying about stuff deliberately. They are often convinced of what they're saying. For instance a guy explained to me that it was normal for him to have very high blood pressure because he had it all the time. This is not normal. Going down for a smoke then coming up with a Pepsi and eating crap is not normal. The doc even told him, you're not going to grow old like that. He ate poo. Nurse practitioner, UDS and 4C, opiates, whatever, I have not done any of those. How dare you ask me? Well they were in your urine, so how did that happen? That mother fricking nurse planted them on me or... Someone must have been snorting C and it came in through the windows and I inhaled it both completely true stories. Unreal. Nah man. Your guitar bucking C and shooting up. We all see your track marks. I had a similar thing when shadowing a lawyer. I don't know how I have oxycodone in my urine. It had to have been at the hospital. They gave it to me when I got there. They gave you morphine. Not the substance you tested positive for. I can't explain it. Being a patient accused of lying, was a fresh young first year university student, first time living away from my parents and taking care of my own medical needs, signed up to a new doctor and got a slew of basic blood work done for a general health checkup, get a phone call saying all is not well and I need to go in to speak to the doctor, turns out my liver function is raised, she asks how much I drink, maybe one drink a couple of times a month, truthfully, she doesn't believe me. The practice was on campus and all her patients were students. She tells me that she knows how much us students drink but I'm adamant I don't drink that often. She tells me to cut down and sends me on my way without further investigation. Fast forward 3 years and I change doctors again and get the same blood tests. Same result. Elevated liver function. A quick check of my notes tells the doctor I'm on medication that can cause this and have been for years. Mystery solved. I continue to have elevated liver function some 11 years later with no noticeable effect. No harm done by not being believed by that first doctor but it annoys me that she never bothered to check my records for medication and that if it had been something else more serious she didn't check it out or give me more tests to find out what it was. Just presumed I was drinking myself to an early grave. Anesthesiologist here. Patient lies about using drugs while needing twice the anesthetic of a normal person. It's sad to see. 
Not a doctor but my cokehead uncle has suffered from sinus infections for years as a result of his use. He lies about the cause of his infection saying it's allergies, a cold, or the flu to garner pity from others. He's on disability and Medicaid, so he can easily get in to see a doctor each time he gets sick. He's been on so many antibiotics he can only use the super strong stuff to combat the infections now. He takes pseudofedrine every day to clear his nose as a result of his allergies. He uses so much pseudofedrine he has to ask friends to buy it for him because he uses more than his state's monthly limit. He had surgery to open up his nasal passages a few years ago. He felt great for a few months before he went back to having the same issues. I am not a doctor but do have experience from the patient side of the story. I've been in the air a lot, some time like once a month, because they couldn't find the cause of a returning stomach ache. Kept asking the same questions, pregnant, STD, appendicitis, ETC. They even kept asking if I really didn't feel pain on the other side, because that made more sense. Eventually they just gave me painkillers because the pain would fade after a few hours. After a few months back and forth one doctor did one last minute test, I had to sit in the general hall, waiting, because the air was overcrowded. Turned out I had several abscesses on my uterus and had to be treated for several months. Even then the nurses didn't believe me when I said I was in severe pain. Making comments like it doesn't look like you are in pain. But when they saw my blood pressure and heart rate they took me a bit more serious. Still skeptic but at least they didn't make comments anymore. I still can feel really bitter about that period in the hospital. Not a doctor, but when my mill lies through her teeth to explain her blood sugar being so high and lying about what she eats. She's a nurse practitioner BTW. I was admitted for pancreatitis once and the doctors and nurses repeatedly asked if I used drugs or was a heavy drinker. No to both. They continually didn't believe me even though I told them to test me. I was in the hospital for over a week without once having any withdrawal symptoms. I know that patients lie, but it's just as frustrating when you're telling the truth and they don't believe you. Even my wife told them several times that I did not drink or use drugs but they kept saying it's extremely rare to get pancreatitis if you're not a heavy user. Um, not a doctor. But I've had a few doctors raise eyebrows and when I was a university student lying about how much I drank a week. Also I imagine the any consumption of recreational drugs question got a lot of false negatives. Not a doctor, but used to work in an a uh, high proportion of patients who are allergic to NSAIDs. When you tell them you'll give them Tylenol instead oh I'm allergic to that too. I'm actually the opposite, allergic to narcotics. So at most I ask for ibuprofen. I broke my ankle a few months ago. A nurse asks if I want anything. I tell her no. Allergic and all that. She proceeds to ask two more times just in case. Like lady. WTF. No I prefer not to die just to avoid some pain. It's weird how many people don't believe someone can actually be allergic to narcotics. Not a doctor. But EMT. I love the ones who get revived by Narcan and claim to have only had a couple of beers. Um. Narcan doesn't work that way. I have not done any drugs recently. Tachycardic. Pale. Steamy on ECG. Heart attack. And C positive urine. Fun fact. We don't care or judge. But it does affect our treatment plans. So shoot straight people. And obviously stop making it snow in August and other illicit drugs. Standard not a doctor, but, back in my drinking alcoholic days, I was trying to convince multiple hospital staff, post blood work, that I hadn't had any alcohol, my back was 0.50 and I shouldn't have even been breathing. I once had an, alcoholic, patient with a back of 0.72, it was so high that I had to manually calculate it using the measured osmol in the blood because our machines only go up to 0.5. He was happily goose stepping around the air. Not a doc, but I read medical records for work. One woman went to the air for a cold sore on her mouth which they determined was due to herpes. She then insisted that she got it from the chicken nuggets that she just ate prior to coming to the air. Neurology resident here, responded to a stroke code for a lady who had acute ataxia and slurred speech. Her blood alcohol level was 0.34. Although she claimed to have given up alcohol the year prior. Mystery solved. 
I can't imagine how much booze you'd have to drink for it to take 8760 hours to bring you down to a 0.34. Patient, I'm taking really good care of my diet. HA1C equals 11%. GSW to the leg. How did this happen? Well doc, you see I was just minding my own business and it happened. Even I want to know. Police later confirmed he was caught burglaring by the homeowner. Dude got shot while robbing and jumped off a second floor balcony while getting shot on his leg. He managed to get away with assistance from his business partner. This is totally the wrong place to ask this, but last year I got some pretty bad rabdo from doing the same workout I had been doing for 6 months. Took me 2 days to go in, cause I just figured it was a pulled muscle that was making it miserable to walk with no signs of kidney failure. All doctors since give me a look of pure disbelief when I tell them I did nothing different. I can clearly see them checking the liar box in their head. How do you convince a doctor you aren't lying when your story makes no sense? You don't. I'm not a doctor but I was in a mental hospital because I tried to kill myself while on acid and I caught a cold. I tried asking for some cold medicine but the doctors pretty much thought I was lying about my health to get to drugs. I don't blame them one of the patients there was snorting his pills so I get it. It took the two days to figure out I was actually sick. That they have never smoked. Meanwhile, I walk in the room and it smells like a bar and my eyes are watering. But yeah, they've never smoked. Well I accidentally outed myself as a nose picker to my nose throat doctor. He was examining the inside of my nose and said do you blow your nose a lot I was like nope. And he stood up straight and just looked at me, nodding, and said hi. I realized after that I probably have a lot of scars on the inside of my nose from picking it. I played myself. I accidentally fell onto this jar of mayonnaise, light bulb, action figure, stapler, barbie doll and that's how it got stuck in my butt. I'm an extremely boring 25 year old who doesn't drink, smoke or do any recreational drugs. When I went to a doctor to get a checkup, he asked these questions and when I answered honestly he said yeah right, just because I'm boring doesn't mean I'm a liar. Not a doctor but mom's a nurse. Asking older women if they've ever had elective surgery, they say no, as their obviously perky and round boobs sit pleasantly high upon their chest. Sure you haven't a ma'am. I forget about mine because it's been so long, and I'm only sort of older. 46, and mine are only 10 years old now. Sometimes when asked about previous surgeries I say no, then remember I've had my tubes tied. Often I still forget the boob job, might not be intentional lying. We just get past the recovery and move on is all. This literally just happened today but a patient said she had never done drugs in their life. Nurse asked the patient why there was a crack pipe in the bag then. The look of the patient's face was priceless. Not a doc but in my profession I regularly show to hospitals with babies positive for C. Mother positive for C. But lady has never touched a drug in her life. In fact, she never even heard of C. Those poor babies. Had a PT on scene one time claimed he hasn't done em in several years and was sober since. Then PD opened the door to the rig and said they found his em and pipe and he was going to jail when his seizures stopped. Kinda sensitive and not a doctor but I do work as an EMT. When a parent is super secretive about their child's health, hesitant to answer basic questions, won't explain random bumps, scars, bruises, and seem aggressive when you want to examine those wounds. It's usually a sign that the parent is abusing their child or that they're aware of abuse but afraid to tell anyone. Working in healthcare field but not a doctor. Patient lying about not being allergic to a medication that he was clearly allergic to and we are already wheeling him into the operating room when we kept noticing that he's getting more red as minutes pass. I'm not a doctor but I know many women patients lie about how they fell off the floor when clearly there are bruises and injuries from domestic violence. An aunt of mine had a black circle around her eye cause of domestic violence. I was young and I primitively asked her about that when she came asking for glasses before heading out to which she answered a bee stung. Seen a lot of crap. The common joke is, how do you know a patient's lying to you? Because they are speaking, 
I know this was supposed to be a funny thread, but it's really exhausting. I am trying to help you. Just tell me the freaking truth. During my rotation in med school I saw several people male and female. Adults and kids who came in with an object lodged in their rectum. It varied vegetables, candles, flower vases. One time it was a toilet paper holder. Every single one of those people had the same story. They were naked and fell on it. Not a doctor, not a patient, nor a friend to anyone who did so. But this post reminded me of that 4chan guy who got salmonella on his dong after freaking raw chicken breast, and then he went on 4chan and claimed that he was cooking naked and dropped a raw chicken on his dong. That's why I was getting red spots. I wonder what he told his doctor. Not a doctor but I've been drunk at a hospital waiting for a friend with alcohol poisoning. Took a selfie to send to the rest of the group and realized in the morning, more like afternoon, how drunk I was looking. Beside vomit stains on the trainers, mismatched clothes and sunglasses at night. I don't think anyone believed me when I insisted that I was sober. Got a few weird looks from the doctors and nurses. Thank god they didn't insisted. Not a doctor, but my sister once went to the hospital with a BPM of 200. She swore she hadn't done any drugs, even though we all knew she was on something. It wasn't until we found her rolled up dollar bills. Classic. That we realized it was coke. I assumed it was M from the way she acted during that period of time. And that she accidentally snorted M once thinking it was coke. More cousin a doctor time. Teenage kid comes in with obvious injuries. Says he's not being abused but instead is just a daredevil type kid who gets hurt a lot. Cousin gets the parents out of the room and asks the kid again. But the kid's story stays the same. Child services arrive. Cousin can basically prove at least some of the injuries can only happen if inflicted by another human being. Bruises in the shape of feet shoes hands act mostly, and the kid gets taken from his parents. They eventually did figure out the parents were abusing the kid, but the kid continued to deny it and the parents were convicted on the medical evidence alone. Cousin was never sure if the kid was afraid or brainwashed or what and lost him after he went into the system but sadly with kids like that it usually doesn't turn out too well. Patient said she bit her tongue and wanted it looked at. It was a tumor that had to have been growing for literally years. Don't smoke, kids. Guy came into the ed flushed, high heart rate, nauseated, feeling terrible. His wife is super histrionic he's having a heart attack, he's going to die, she smells like she's been drinking all day. His EKG and troponins are normal. Finally get them to give me his full med list. Antibuse was on it. Ask him if he's been drinking. Nope. Not a drop. Blood alcohol says. 150. Good job buddy. And ma'am. He's not going to die. I had a woman who was over 100 pounds overweight tell me that she only ate 2 pickles a day and drank only water. And that she just physically couldn't lose weight. I know how calories work. Dummy. If you're going to lie to me, at least don't try to convince me you got a beast off the energy of the freaking universe. EMT. Single vehicle crash with one patient. Guy hit a tree pretty hard, scattering the empty shooter bottles he had all over his car, and the several gallons of gasoline he delicately placed in the middle seat have erupted everywhere, turning the scene somewhat risky. Guy is recovering from a seizure caused by alcohol withdrawal. Sir, have you had anything to drink? I'm not the police. I don't care. I just need to know. He says he hasn't. He technically he wasn't wrong. But it was still in his system as the blood tests we did confirmed. He just hadn't had enough recently to stop the symptoms of withdrawal. Another one. Another crash. Two patients. Grandma put her head through the windshield but is remarkably spry and alert. Do you have any medical history none? She says she's fit as a fiddle. About 10 minutes later she casually mentions that she's bummed to go back to the hospital. Why? Oh, the stroke she had last month and the blood thinners she takes. Grandpa called us for general weakness. What events brought you to this point? Were you doing anything out of the ordinary? He tells us he just got up from the couch when he nearly collapsed. We begin examining him and find a huge bruise over the greater part of his body. Turns out he had fallen 30 feet off his roof a few days earlier. Apparently that wasn't worth mentioning. It blows my mind how people don't think of these things how I don't think they're always intentionally hidden. But dang. Tell us. 
Big ones. If you take erectile dysfunction meds and call us for chest pain. For the love of god freaking tell us. You will die if we give you certain meds. We'll bring you back. But you bet your butt we're gonna be pee and we'll know. Also. Some folks have a hard time with THC and fentanyl. They don't like to mix. We don't give a frick. Just tell us so we don't kill you by accident. My wife works in orthopedics and she stopped asking people with a specific hand fracture what happened. Now she just asks so what did you punch? An opiate addict, 25 years of opiate use, came into detox from opiates. His one and only allergy was allegedly to methadone. This was so he would get dihydromorphone. Think long action morphine, or morphine. We gave him naloxone. This stops opiates from working on you, and benzodiazepams, anti-anxiety muscle relaxants. I don't have any story like that but I wanted to say something, no matter how embarrassing, how inconvenient your situation can be, please don't lie to the ones willing to help you getting cured, you will not help yourself, and going to the doctor to say that nothing happened is not good for you or anybody, you need help. You must provide all the information you can give to receive as much help as possible. Take care and stay safe. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.